The National Famine Museum at Strokestown Park and Irish Heritage Trust are screening this film as part of the Great Famine Voices Roadshow 2020 online event series. The Great Famine Voices Roadshow is funded by the Government of Ireland Emigrant Support Programme. My name is Pat, Paddy Reynolds. I'm the son of Paddy Reynolds. I was born in Birkenhead and so was my father, so was his father. Prior to that, the Reynolds had come from Dundalk. This, this, it can be quite a bleak story, this, because people come from Ireland, there was hard times for them, but it wasn't universal. Some of them actually went on to great success, and some of their families have since gone on to great success. My father's mother was Bridget Tocker. Bridget, the Tockers come from Galway. It's normally, very soon after they come to England, it was corrupted to Tucker because and most of my family were illiterate when they, or deemed to be illiterate when they come to Birkenhead, to where I come from. Bridget, Bridget Tucker, John, John Reynolds is, my, my great grandfather married Ellen, married Ellen, Ellen Wilson, who married Francis Trainer. The trainers and the Wilsons come from Mar Mar. Uh, uh, Mar it, was modern, it was Margaret Trainer, sorry. Margaret Trainer died in Birkenhead from typhus, and she lived in St Anne Street. It's one of those kind of, it's a very bleak time, but at the same time in Price Street, there was born the person who became the editor of The Observer, James Lewis Garvin. And it's that kind of contrast. We're from the same kind of main streets these people could come. Francis Trainer, he died in Workhead Warehouse along with his four of his children. So that's the kind of the bleak side of it. The Tockers, again, they, they all stayed in Birkenhead in the middle of Birkenhead, in, in an area of kind of like, there's a plaque up at the top of Price Street. They all lived in that area. They were all very Catholic. The church played a prominent part in their lives. Most there, are, there is a reference in the, in the books I've got from a, a thesis that was unpublished by a, a fellow who did an awful lot of work on it. And some of these streets were 90% Catholic. By the same token, the occupations were invariably dockers, or they went to sea as firemen, stokers. Uh, on my mum's side, the shores, they come from Kildare. The first one of them to appear in the census in Birkenhead is in 1861 in, in Oak Street. Oak Street's kind of it's had a plot, played a part in my family's history since that time. My mum and dad were both born in Oak Street, as was my dad's father. Oak Street has actually been prominent in my life, but it was also prominent in the history of Birkenhead. During the Gallabaw, the riots of 1862, an inhabitant of Oak Street, Henry Lennon, was actually charged Henry Lennon, incidentally, was a Catholic, charged with assaulting an Irish policeman, Patrick Carney, who was also a Catholic. And funnily enough, at one stage, Patrick Carney also lived in Oak Street. Henry Lennon was deported to Australia. And it, from, my, from my research, he was innocent, he was just a stooge. But it's interesting that the Catholic Church played a prominent part in defending the rioters. Patrick Carney's two daughters, one of these coincidences, Patrick Carney's two daughters actually taught me my mother. And one of, the son, one of his sons had become a Catholic priest. So it's that kind of, you know, which side are you on here? Um, that was the, that was the shores. My mum's, mate, my mum's mother was a Burns, and they come from Carlo. And that's the one I referred to earlier on, Bridget Burns. She was always in trouble. She got tried twice for manslaughter in Bergen and never convicted. She finished up in the Nevis Hospital in Bentley outside Bristol. Now it's interesting to gain the contrast. Bridget Byrne's cousin, David Kenny, was one of the founding members of the National Union of Seamen. He was one of the first councillors, Labour councillors in Bergen Head. He died during the 1911 strike in Liverpool, they reckon because of the hard work. But he was a, an associate of Havelock Wilson, Tom Mann, Etc. Etc. Uh, and he often uh, David Kenny. Not not only was he kind of prominent in the trade union movement, he was actually a very prominent Catholic. Um, he was in the choir of St Lawrence's, and he had visions of him walking down Watson Street, which was a sort of area of Birkenhead, on a Sunday morning after being to go, after going to church, thinking, "There's our Bridget drunk again." 
But going back to Oak Street, Oak Street had a terrible reputation. The church just adjacent to it was St. Lawrence's, a Catholic church, and they used to say Hail Mary's on the hour for, for the inhabitants of Oak Street. And over time, they reckon they repented. I don't much believe this, but they repented, and they actually got a, a kind of a better reputation. The funny thing about, again, about Oak Street, there's documents, like, it's prominently Irish, like 90%, 99% Irish, but there was factions, two Irish factions. Now, Oak Street's only about 100 yards long, but there was two, two factions in it, and, you know, they're in court, they're in the new, new newspapers. I've, I've got the name of the mayor, what they call the Leinster mob, I think, and the Connaught mob, or the Dundalk mob. But there was that kind of factionalism, so it wasn't a kind of this, these unified people were all in the same boat. You, you know, the commonality was you were all Irish, but you come from different counties. And I remember reading, like you see in, 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 in court documents, like a woman's in court for calling someone, you dumb dog looking B. Oh, yo, you can't hard looking B. But it is that kind of, re re a lot of references to, to different counties. As you just remember, the pact of Gottenberg and Head and Price Street, it's not so much Price Street that's the important place, it's the, it's the streets of them. And it's funny, you can get pictures of Price Street. It's very, very difficult to get a picture of a minor street. But just over the road from Oak Street, and literally over the road, was a place called School Place. When I was growing up, it was called School Place. It was next to Cath Cathcart Street School. But prior to that, they changed the name because the street had this terrible reputation. It was called Byram Street. That's where my maternal grandmother was born. Her mother, Bridget Burns, she, she, learned a, she, she, she had a chaotic life. The children were put into, into, um, into care. They were actually in the warehouse. And my granny's sister, Daisy, and against her name is illegitimate bastard. Mother is jailbird. That's documented. As a consequence of that, the kids, the girls went to Pantasif in North Wales. The son went to a Catholic orphanage in, in Hyde in London. It had to be a Catholic orphanage. The Catholics didn't want the kids to go to Protestants, whatever, whatever. It's just one of them coincidences. Um, Elvis Costello, his great-grandfather was in the same school as uh, Thomas Burns. Um, all that street, you go, you, you go see it, and for instance, in Pantasif, you think it must be lonely for the kid to go from the, the, from the middle of Birkenhead to, to, the, to, the, to the lovely, you know, open countryside in North Wales. My granny never had a bad word for it. But funny enough, in, 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 in the same time she was, there was about six or seven or even eight kids from the same street. Now, the street was only kind of, wasn't 100 yards long. So it was like, like basically going home. But it was that kind of like, you know, they, they were Catholics. They were deemed to be Catholics. But for instance, on Good Friday one time, they're all in court because you get rotten drunk on Good Friday. Well, in my childhood memory, Good Friday is one of the worst days of the year. You couldn't do anything. But it's that kind of not nominal Catholics, and you know there are references, to, as I just explained, to the, the people, the, the, the church praying for the people in Oak Street. And fun, funny enough, in the, the, the Garibaldi riots that I mentioned earlier, the, the Protestant vicar, the Church of England vicar, was an Irishman from Limerick, Joseph Bailey. The Catholic priest involved in it, Robert Wright Brundred, was actually formerly a, a, a Protestant vicar. And it's all those kind of crossovers that you can never kind of establish and look fair and brown, where do we stand here? You know, if you made a movie of it, you've had the Irish fella, it'd be the Protestant vicar. But it just doesn't work that way. It, it's, 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 for instance, as I said the, the, earlier on in St Anne Street, which had a terrible name. In, again, in the same area, St Anne Street had a terrible name. Again, basically Irish, but that's where James, uh, yeah, L L James Louis Garvin, who went on to become the editor of the Observer, come from. And there are people that there are successes in life, or deemed to be successes, you know, from, from whatever stance you take.